and welcome back to my channel so today's video is really really exciting for me I know I say that in every single video but I really mean it this time because this is my very first insert of my medical school series I know these videos have been a long time coming but I finally started and I'm so excited to be sharing with you guys something that is my calling and my passion and what I feel God has put me on this earth to do and I'm so excited to be sharing it with those of you who feel the same way which is probably why you're watching this video so this video is going to be the how to get into medical school from a high school perspective video I was gonna mix it with the graduate video but I saw that it was gonna be a little bit too long so this video is just for my high schoolers those of you that haven't passed grade 10 grade 11 are in matric and want to know what you need to do to get into medicine so I hope you guys find the video helpful if you have questions leave them in the comments down below I'll get around to answering them and all the other information you will need will be in the description box so definitely check that out but until the next video I love you guys and I hope you find this helpful and God ever stay blessing you so before we get into the how of things I really want to address the why why do you want to study medicine this is a question that everybody genuinely needs to ask themselves because you need to be sure that you're doing it for the right reasons everybody wants to be a doctor in general because I guess they get good marks in high school so the most prestigious thing that you can do well according to many societal standards is go out and be a doctor or a lot of people think doctors make a lot of money which they do especially if you're a specialist but you must also think that the amount of money that doctors make is equated to how much work that they do and being a doctor is honestly a life of servitude well many Maybe just for the first few years before you specialize but still it's something that you're called to do as a service to others and if you don't have the heart for that you really need to think twice about it because you're going to be one of those doctors that does not enjoy their job that does not love what they do and obviously if you don't love what you do if you don't enjoy your job you can't be compassionate to the patients that you have and especially in a South African setting where socioeconomic status and all of those things really affect the nature of people that come into the hospitals and what is expected of you as a doctor if you don't have love for people and if you you don't have compassion you're really really going to struggle so before you become one of those doctors that nobody wants to have one of those really honestly horrible people that are good at their job maybe probably if because you're a brilliant person but are terrible at interacting with patients treating patients like human beings then maybe you shouldn't be doing this job because there's a lot of other ways in this life to be making money that won't take you as long as medicine that doesn't have I guess as great um, standard or as great a weight on you as is expected of you in the medical field so you really need to think of why you want to study medicine gauge your reasons figure out your reasons understand why you want to be a doctor and also understand what's expected of you and weigh your expectations against what's expected of you and if you feel that those two things don't balance or they don't meet then maybe you should consider a different career path so now that we've gotten that out of the way and we are basically now left with the people that want to be doctors because they love people and they're compassionate and it's basically also their calling we're going to get into the how so i'm going to start with the newbies basically the people that are still in high school the freshies that haven't graduated um high school yet graduated high school uh, basically haven't passed matric yet um the first people that i'd like to talk to is those going from grade 9 to grade 10. so if you're moving from grade 9 to grade 10 this is when you're picking subjects now when you need to i guess focus your subject choice on what it is that you want to do so if you want to do medicine the main subjects that you're gonna need to have let me just track is mathematics pure maths well depending on whether or not they're phased it out in South Africa by that time but you need to have pure maths you need to do physical sciences which was my personal favorite in high school you need to do English and you also need to do life sciences or biology life sciences or biology is not like a core prerequisite but it's obviously suggested because if you're gonna be um, dealing with the human body and dealing with the biology of human beings it would be nice to have like a little bit of background because uh, that might come handy in your favor when you get into first year in medical school so without the required subjects obviously as any degree works you won't be able to get into medicine and unfortunately you need points for each individual set of subjects and if you don't have those points you won't be able to make it into medicine so be wary of your subject choices choose the right subjects for your degree which is medicine so make sure that you have these subjects on your list now moving on is okay well I would say that this is the best stage of your journey 
or rather the best stage of the entire medicine journey just in general because this is when you have the power to shape your path like you haven't started you haven't done anything yet so you really need to make sure that you make the most of this whole opportunity meaning from grade 10 you need to start working hard get yourself into the habit of working hard get yourself into the habit of getting distinctions get yourself into the habit of being excellent from grade 10 because that will set you up for grade 11 set you up for matric and it will be much easier for you to get the required marks that you need to get to pass um, in grade 11 and matric to get into medicine because if you slack all the way through grade 10 slack all the way through grade 11 which is still what I'm going to talk about and then be brilliant and matric unfortunately you probably won't make it into medicine either way so medicine is a very competitive program I'm just looking at my notes just to make sure that I'm not skipping anything medicine is a really competitive program so in South Africa I would say there's about four universities that would be Stellenbosch uh, UCT WITS and Pretoria and there's also Walter Sisulu, so that's about five or six, and Medunsa. So there's about six or seven, if I'm missing one, um, universities, or UK is it in, in Free State. Okay, eight. There's eight universities in this country that offer medicine as a course, and each university takes typically between 200 and 300 students. And as you can imagine, how many people matriculate every year, and how many of those people that matriculate want to get into medicine? And then on top of that, how many people that want to get into medicine that have matriculated have gotten those distinctions that they need to get into medicine? So as you can see, there's a whole lot of people, there's thousands and thousands of people that want to get into the program. So if you want to stand apart and if you want to make sure that you get into the program, you need to start the whole distinction mentality early because if you start it late, unfortunately, you're going to miss out because there are so many other people that can make it in and the spaces for the program are very, very limited. So... As I said, I'm going to address the whole grade 11 thing because this was personally my experience. I guess for me in high school, I was always just a brilliant student, but I wasn't excessively brilliant. Like I didn't give my 100%. I gave probably maybe, let's say, 60, 70%. And I was always landing on 70s. And I was very content with those marks because I was just like, I don't need to do better um, coming first at school. But what I didn't realize, especially in grade 11, was that when you apply for university, the marks that count for you or the marks that get into medicine are your grade 11 marks not your matric marks so your grade 11 marks are what are going to determine whether you get accepted into medical program or you don't there's a very small amount of people that get accepted into um, medicine that didn't do well in grade 11 but did really well in matric so the bulk of you are going to be accepted into medicine by your grade 11 marks so what you need to make sure is going to be amazing is those prerequisite subjects and just your general average in grade 11. This is obviously because when you think about it when you apply for university especially in terms of most of the universities except for UCT as far as I know um, you only give in your grade 11 June marks and I think your grade 11 end of your marks. Those are the only marks that universities take from you. So when they give you a conditional acceptance or when they give you a place, they give you that place in grade 11. And all you need to do by the time you get to matric is maintain your standard and then you've basically gotten into the medical program. If you haven't gotten a what is it called, conditional acceptance in grade 11, by the time you get to matric, the spaces are full. So you're going to go be a star in matric, get seven distinctions, but you won't have a place in medicine because all of the conditional acceptance spots have already been filled. So that's why it's really, really important to make sure that you focus on your grade 11 marks, make sure that those are brilliant. And that's why I'm saying you need to start this distinction mentality early because if your marks are good already from grade 10, grade 11 is going to follow and obviously matric, you're going to maintain the standard and you're going to get into the program. So focus on your grade 11 marks, make sure that those are up to scratch because that is what is going to get you into medicine. So now everybody I'm sure is concerned about what are my marks supposed to look like when I want to get into medicine? What is the APS score that I need to get? So the APS score that you need to get for medicine is pretty much about 42 points. So if you have 42 points, actually just between 35 and 42 points. I'm just being extra by giving you guys the upper limit, but between 30, 35 and 42 points is how much you need to get into medicine. Meaning that your prerequisites or your prerequisite subjects need to be at least a level 5 on the distinction scale, or rather on the mark scale. Level 5 being between 60 and 69%, because there's 7 levels, so obviously the level 6 is above uh, 70% and 80%, and then there's level 7, which is, I guess, above 90 But basically, you need to make sure that, I feel, just discard this whole, I just need to get 60 mentality because if you get 60 you're technically scraping like I said there's so many people that are applying for this degree you're scraping at the bottom of the barrel hoping to get left 
whatever's left of the crumbs falling from the table but if your marks are 70s and above at least then you know that you're in a comfortable position and you're confident with your application and the chances of you getting accepted are going to be much higher now the next thing that's really really important to note if you want to study medicine is that you're going to be required to write the NBT or the National Benchmark Test which is written in every university in the country and it's basically a standardized test to gauge the aptitude of applicants and the three components that are uh, comprised or rather the three components that comprise the NBT is an academic literacy part, there's a mathematics part and then there's a quantitative literacy part. So basically this exam is like an IQ test for lack of a better example and you're not going to be able to study and prepare for this because there isn't like a scope for it but basically like in general with the mathematics it's going to be stuff that you've done from grade 8 to matric so it's not going to be new things and then the academic literacy one is just to test like your reading and your reasoning skills um, so that also you can't really study for but it um, wasn't so difficult and then the quantitative literacy one is also mm, mathematics too but with a little bit of math literacy mixed in there as well so I'm not even sure if they're like past papers for the NBT really I did, don't remember practicing with uh, past papers but I'm pretty sure that some sort of resource to help you prepare for the test should be available so to do that or to find out information about that you would be able to check on the NBT website which I'm gonna put on the screen if you guys are interested in going to check out what resources available to are available to you um, for you to be able to study for that test but you're going to need to pass that test because the results of that test are also very very important because like I said it's some sort of an IQ test so obviously if your score for the NBT is really low then technically they're going they can read that as your IQ for the degree that you want to be in being lower than what's expected of you so you really need to try your best to prepare for the exam so and these are typically written towards the end of the year or maybe they're written throughout the year I'm actually gonna put all these details in the description box below because I didn't do like extensive research on it I just wanted you guys to uh, well extensive research because I wrote it a long time ago but I just wanted you guys to you know know that that's gonna be expected of you and that you're going to need to write the NBT and parse it if you want to get into medicine as well now some universities are going to require you to fill out some sort of biographical questionnaire now what that is is basically what do you do outside of wanting to be a doctor what are the different facets and aspects of your life that I guess could give us a gauge or an idea of what kind of a person you are and also that also entails all of the community service kind of work that you've done so have you ever tried to go work at an old age home a children's home have you done some concert in the hospital have you been participating in your community activities are you active at church where you're a prefect school where you're an SRC where you are I don't know cultural committee member so basically it's just trying to gauge the different aspects of who you are and the different aspects of your personality because in this country I'm not even sure like if um, they do interviews for medicine I know I wasn't interviewed for medicine when I applied so I don't think that they do that so the only way that they can kind of gauge who you are outside of your matric marks or grade 11 marks is that biographical questionnaire this is an expected review from every university but I as one of my next advice points is apply at every single university so it would work against against you not to have done any of that stuff if you're going to need to fill out a biographical questionnaire for another university or one of the universities that you apply to so it's really really important to and I think this this just follows I mean if you want to be a doctor you need to be exposed to some sort of medical setting so you know what is expected of you when you go to study medicine or when you go to become a doctor because I mean obviously most of our pictures of what medicine is is what we've seen on house what we've seen on Grey's Anatomy but that's not an exactly accurate depiction of our setting here in South Africa especially so you're gonna need to go and see it go and experience it so that it also helps you to be sure that this is what you want to do because when you get like a very accurate picture or a real life reality kind of picture of it this could sway you in one direction or the other so just to help yourself it would probably be wise for you to get some sort of exposure to the medical setting um, before you apply and obviously it's going to count in your favor for the biographical questionnaire um, questionnaire fill out whatever <laughs> so uh, just make sure that you have some sort of multifaceted areas or you know uh, background to you because especially with things like I went to go work in an old age home you need to provide proof of that you need somebody from the old age home or wherever it is that you're saying that you've worked to vouch for you and you're gonna need proof of that so you can't just tick things and say that you've done things that you actually haven't done so if you're still at a level where you can invest in doing those things definitely do that because that is going to count in your favor so in summary 
what's really really important for you to remember number one is your grade 11 marks are more important than your matric marks make sure that those look good make sure that they meet the standard and obviously if you get a conditional acceptance make sure that you keep that standard up throughout your matric year number two be wary of your nbt exam make sure that you get resources so that you can prepare for it because that is also very very important for your acceptance and number three make sure that you get some exposure some experience you know for the biographical questionnaire that is going to count in your favor and also it's just a good idea for you to get a real good scope of what's expected to review um, in the medical setting if you want to be a doctor in this country and also I'm going to leave links to a biographical questionnaire is if you want to know um, what actual questions or what actual scope they cover I'm going to leave that in the description box down below also I'm going to leave a link to the NBT website so you guys can gather information about that and my final words would be make sure that you apply at every university especially if you're coming from high school well obviously this is for you guys this video is for you guys uh, I was going to make it like together with the graduate video but I think it's going to be too long so make sure that you apply at every single university because that obviously gives you a higher chance of getting accepted especially if your marks are good number two make sure you apply early medicine applications close in march so make sure that you've applied for medicine before the end of march because obviously if you don't apply by then you're not going to get accepted because the application window has closed so make sure that you apply early apply on time and then the last thing that's obviously very important which is what you gauge and what you have influence over make sure that you aim high make sure that your marks are good put yourself at a good vantage point so that when you apply you've already been set up for success don't don't be okay with the average 60 to 69 percent make sure that you keep your marks at distinction level if you can't get to 80s make sure that you're hitting those 75s because you're going to be at a really good standpoint or a good point too apply for medicine and your chances of getting in are going to be much higher so i'm going to end the video here for my beautiful high schoolers um i hope this was very very helpful for you guys if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments box down below i will definitely get around to answering them for you and if there's anything that i feel that i've forgotten that i think that i think is important i'm going to leave it in the description box down below so please please check that because most of the information that you're going to need is going to be in there so for my graduates i'm going to be posting my next video about how to get into medicine from a university perspective so for those of you who are in high school and you eventually pass your matric and you don't make it into medicine first time around like me don't worry there's another way for you to get into medicine after high school and i'm going to address that in the next video so i love you guys and i hope this was helpful i hope that all of you guys are amped for your medicine applications amped for your final year exams whatever grade you may be in and i wish you all the best on your medicine journey but until the next video i love you guys and god ever stay blessing you yeah.